time to chat about insects. The CSIRO has again been getting creative with naming new species. A soldier fly named after drag queen RuPaul is just one of the 150 species named in the past 12 months. And here you can see why it copped this name. Bit of uh, charisma, uniqueness, nerve and talent in the namer. You know who he is, Brian Lessard. Bry the Fly Guy, he's an entomologist with the CSIRO and he joins us now from Canberra. Bry, g'day. Last time, this uh, this year, la wait, last year, this time, we were talking about your naming uh, insects after Marvel characters. What's gone on this time? Morning, Nate. Thanks for having me. So this is the 50th species I've ever named, so I wanted to do something quite um, spectacular. So it's definitely serving looks of charisma and uniqueness. So I named it after RuPaul, the Glamazon herself. And I think this fly can give RuPaul a run for her money on the runway because it's got leg for days and it also has this Glamazon um, look to it as well. <laughs> and yeah. Legs for days. I like that. And there's Rue Paul herself looking stunning. I, I will admit, perhaps not quite as stunning as that insect, though. That's not all you've done. So, Rue Paul, great there. But you've also lent into Pokemon and Digimon this time round. Yeah, so our PhD student, uh, Yuan Huzio, is a massive Pokemon fan. And it turns out Pokemon and entomology has a lot in common. And he was actually inspired by Pokemon to become an entomologist. And as he was doing his PhD going around Australia in remote areas, he found that these three beetles are really rare and hard to find. So he named them after the legendary Pokemon Articuno, Zapdos, and also Moltres as well. That's incredible. So, OK, you're obviously having a little bit of fun with this. And I can imagine during lockdown, stuck down there in the archives, in the, in the insect collection, you're having a bit of fun. Why is it important that we're naming these? And, and why are you choosing to do it in the way you are? So scientists have only estimate a quarter of life in Australia and naming a species is the first step to actually protecting them. And we don't want endangered species to sashay away into extinction. Two of these soldier flies are absolutely beautiful and they're found from Lamington National Park. And unfortunately, 80% of that park burns in the black summer bushfires. But now that these species have formal scientific names, I've worked with conservation scientists to actually formally list them as endangered species. They're some of the first flies in Australia to actually get this listing. And now that allows citizen scientists, conservation scientists, and even policymakers go out there and protect them so we can enjoy them for future generations. And it's not just insects, of course, other creatures too. We just saw a gecko there. What else have you lot been naming? Yep, for all those plant lovers as well, our crew at CSIRO Collections have named a beautiful pandana species that's found in the wet tropics of Queensland. Um, it's brand new to science and it has this gorgeous 40 centimetre uh, bright uh, orange fruit um, that's quite spectacular as well. And we also named two uh, new species of orchids from South Australian Victoria too. So uh, when it comes to this naming, this is really crucial, especially after the bushfires we saw last year, right? Uh, if, if we're naming things, it helps us understand them, not just to understand what's here, but also about things that might be coming in from outside, right? Definitely. So naming our native species uh, can also help strengthen our biosecurity as well, because it allows biosecurity officers to more rapidly detect what species are in the country and which ones we need to focus on to prevent from coming overseas. So I actually worked with my colleagues at the Northern Territory Department of Health to detect a novel species of exotic mosquito that is capable of transmitting Japanese encephalitis virus. So by looking at a population of these mosquitoes that were collected from the Darwin region, um, we looked at its DNA and we matched that DNA to a population from East Timor and it had a 99.7% match. So we think that these mosquitoes were actually windblown from Timor Leste or maybe they actually hitched a ride on shipping vessels or aircraft as well. And what's interesting is this um, exotic mosquito was actually initially confused with an unnamed Australian uh, native mosquito too. So it's really important to know what we have here so we can separate them from pests and exotic species coming into the country. Alrighty, Bri, well, I say, Shantae, you stay in the collection, keep it up. And hopefully this time next year, you'll have a whole nother round of new Australian uh, animals and creatures to talk about. Great to have you on the show this morning, mate. 
Thanks so much for having me.